Do you have a lot of bold, fun prints and patterns in your closet that are just collecting dust? Or maybe you've learned over the years through your mistakes to avoid patterns altogether. Or you might be the complete opposite where you cannot get dressed without incorporating some sort of patterns into your outfit. Whatever the case may be, your choice to wear or avoid patterns, whether specific types or altogether in general, that's a part of your personal style and preferences. But what if I told you that there's a relationship between patterns and color seasons? And I'm not just talking about matching the colors found in your color season to whatever pattern you choose as your favorite. What I'm talking about is a little more complicated than that and perhaps even controversial to an extent. But if you can master this rule, not only is it going to help you choose the right patterns, but it's also going to help you choose the right style of jewelry and accessories so that you can bring cohesion to your entire look from head to toe. And what we're gonna talk about in this video is going to change how you look at and shop for patterns, regardless of whether or not you know what your color season is. So make sure to stay tuned till the end if you wanna learn more. Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome. For those of you that are new, this channel is all about taking logical and practical steps in finding your personal and signature style. If that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel and welcome. So this topic of choosing patterns based on your color season is going to be, like I said, somewhat controversial because some of you are probably thinking patterns can be in whatever color we make them to be and it's just about personal preference. Or you might say that it depends more on your body type or your essence more so than your color season. All of which are true statements of their own as well. You know, you're free to choose whichever color and pattern combinations that you find pleasing. Or there might be certain types of patterns that you feel particularly drawn to based on your preferences or for sentimental reasons, or simply because you know they look good on you. But there are definitely some associations between the types of patterns and the colors that are used in those patterns. Let me give you a very obvious example. Some designer brands are well known for their signature patterns, right? Burberry, for example, their signature pattern is the tartan plaid. Now, Burberry designs and sells products with many variations of their signature pattern in different colors. But when we think of Burberry and think about their signature pattern, I think we can agree that the first color that comes to our mind is beige. And of course, this is a part of their marketing and branding strategy, and it happens with many other brands and their signature colors or patterns as well. But this also happens between certain colors and patterns or with certain seasons and patterns because our minds make these kinds of associations all the time without realizing it. For example, these types of ethnic tribal patterns or these bohemian styles of patterns, we typically associate them with autumn colors. Not that these patterns can't be made with winter colors or spring or summer colors. They are man-made after all, so whoever is designing these patterns can choose whichever colors to use and there could be endless possible combinations. But the reason why we see more of certain colors or color groups used for specific types of patterns is because it's how the majority of people associate these colors and patterns together. So it's not that certain colors can only work for certain patterns and vice versa, but there is a general consensus of which colors or seasons and which styles of patterns we typically associate with and are more drawn to. If we go back to the Burberry example, I don't know their sales numbers, but if I had to guess, let's say they're selling a scarf with their signature pattern on it and there's three color options, the beige is likely going to be the top seller out of the three. And that's not because there's more people in warm seasons that are buying these scarves, but because of the mental association we make between the color and the pattern. And this type of mental association we make largely depends on two factors. The first factor is the psychological effects that certain colors or color groups or seasons can have. Throughout this whole color analysis deep dive series that I've been working on with the last few videos, as we've walked through the true warm and true cool seasons and the dominant traits of light, soft, deep, and bright or clear, we've talked about what kinds of images or vibes our minds usually associate with when we think of certain seasons of the year or certain characteristics of colors. If we use the three spring sub-seasons for example, spring is a season of fresh flowers, vibrant green grass, the warmth of the sun, etc. So the vibe of the colors that belong to the true spring palette are colors that are warm and inviting, uplifting, cheerful, and youthful. And the patterns that we often associate with the true spring colors are also patterns that evoke those similar feelings and vibe. 
Popular patterns made with these colors are often patterns like florals, things associated with nature. They're usually less symmetrical and more organic in shape. They use more fluid lines, etc. And then as we merge the images of spring with the characteristic attributes of bright or clear, colors in the bright spring palette are even more energetic and vibrant, more contrasted. Colors also become slightly less warm, so they feel more crisp and vivid. So the patterns we see paired with these vibrant bright spring colors are often bigger in shape, and they still have that liveliness of the spring energy, so patterns like floral, or something with nature are still easily found with these colors, but the patterns become bolder in general. And then lastly, we have light spring, which also still has that liveliness and the usefulness of the spring energy, but the feelings that these colors evoke become softer and more delicate as the attributes of the light characteristic bring a sense of purity and innocence to the color palette. And with the patterns using these colors, we see that similar effect of things becoming more delicate, so smaller in shape, more intricate and detailed, less bold, etc. Of course, I'm not saying that spring patterns can only be floral or be made up of fruits or trees. Like I said, patterns are man-made after all, so there's nothing stopping us from creating small and delicate floral patterns made up of black and white. But this brings me to the next factor that has an influence on the associations we make between colors or color seasons and patterns. And that is, you probably guessed it, contrast. I feel like this whole deep dive series should have been called something like all about contrast because I bring up the topic of contrast so many times. But it is that closely related to color analysis and finding your best colors in my opinion because if we're looking for our best colors that won't steal the attention away from our faces or colors that won't drag us down or make us look drab, the contrast level found in the colors we wear have to match the contrast level of our own coloring. So I do really think that knowing your own contrast level and finding the right range of contrast in your outfits that work with you is honestly, it's half the battle. If you've been following the series, I've mentioned countless times now that all winter seasons have high contrast either through having high clarity or low value, which is depth essentially. Like I said, there's nothing stopping us from creating small and delicate patterns using highly contrasted colors like black and white. But patterns break up a solid color, meaning the more detailed and intricate the patterns are, the more broken up the colors become, which lowers the overall contrast level visually. If we compare these two patterns, for example, they're both made up of black and white, but one is far more intricate. Now, if we zoom out and make these patterns appear a bit further away, you'll see that the smaller, more intricate pattern starts to appear more like gray. So this is what I mean by details and patterns lowering the overall overall contrast level because the smaller and the more intricate the patterns are, the more they break up the colors and diverge the attention. So if you're the type that needs a very high level of contrast in your outfits in order to match the high contrast found in your natural coloring, you might be thinking, well, I'm a winter and black and white are my colors, so I'm going to wear this shirt with black and white patterns and it's going to be great. But in reality, that might not always be the case if the details in the patterns are too small or too intricate in a way that lowers the contrast level of the shirt too much. So what I'm suggesting is not about restricting yourself only to certain styles of patterns because you belong to a specific color season. You know, I'm not saying since you're a spring, stick with florals or since you're a winter, avoid patterns at all costs. I'm not saying that, but what I am suggesting is for you to actually think about the effects that different patterns and colors can create on yourself. Visually, in terms of the contrast level, you want to think about whether that particular pattern you're wearing matches the contrast level found in your natural coloring. So even if certain patterns are made up of colors that belong to your color season, depending on the details or how intricate they are, they might or might not work for your overall contrast level. And also psychologically, the way that patterns are designed in the first place using specific shapes and colors evokes certain emotional or characteristic attributes. So thinking about how well those attributes are working with you and the inherent impression that you have might also be helpful in understanding what types of patterns you can work with in truly developing your own style. So finding styles or patterns that work well for you is more than just knowing what your best colors are and trying to find patterns that incorporate those colors, but it's about having a more holistic understanding of yourself and your own image and how you can utilize the colors and patterns to enhance that. 
So in a similar way that you choose patterns that can work well with your color season and your contrast level, you can also use that same thought process in choosing jewelry or accessories to complete your look. I already talked about choosing the right color or shade of jewelry based on your color season in a previous video, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it. And in that video, I mostly talked about how to choose the right color. But in terms of choosing the right style, you can also use the concept of contrast. Let's talk about the size of the jewelry first. Think about it this way. If you are the type that needs a high level of contrast in your clothing, would a small dainty piece of jewelry be noticeable in your entire outfit? Even if we're not talking about outfits, if your features up here and your natural coloring, if you have really high contrast up here, would tiny little diamond studs be all that noticeable? It wouldn't be because the whole energy created by your overall contrast level is big, so you need bigger, bolder styles of jewelry to match that level of energy. Whereas on the opposite end, if your overall contrast level is low, larger and bolder styles of accessories would easily overpower you. To give you a visual real life example, I bought this necklace recently and I wasn't sure about it at first when I received it. When I saw it online, it didn't look very small and even looking through the review photos, I thought, okay, it's decently sized and the pendant is solid with no patterns and it has some thickness to it. So I decided to go ahead with the purchase and I received it just the other day and I was a little surprised to see how small it looked on me and how much more delicate it appeared when I actually wore it. I mean, in the end, I decided to keep it anyways because, you know, for daily use, I think this is pretty subtle and it's just big enough for me. But if it was any smaller or daintier, I probably would have returned it. And I've honestly made this mistake so many times before where I would buy something super dainty because it looks so nice and feminine on someone else only to realize it literally disappears when I put it on. And I've mentioned in my other jewelry video as well that small and dainty jewelry just looks like a piece of dust on me. So this one I think just passes the size that I need at the bare minimum for the jewelry to be visible when I wear it but if you guys think otherwise let me know in the comments similarly with these earrings I wear these daily and honestly they're not small they're like the size of a nickel maybe slightly smaller so they're definitely quite a bit bigger than a lot of the daily hoops that you can find out there and I've tried out a lot of earrings in a similar style of various sizes including the very common smaller sizes that are usually advertised as your daily jewelry and honestly, again, I've wasted so much money on trying to find the right pair that are actually noticeable when I put them on. So over time, I've just learned that going bigger than what I think I need is the safer choice for me. I mean, I'm clearly still learning and experimenting, but it's also why I don't wear a lot of jewelry on a daily basis, because for me, if they're not big enough, then they're not noticeable. So what's the point? That's the case for me, but I know that for some people, this size of earrings is not something that they would prefer to wear on a daily basis because they're too big in size. So again, like I said, we keep coming back to the topic of contrast because it's important not only in finding your best colors or putting an outfit together, but also in deciding what size of jewelry or accessories might be more suitable for you. And usually when you decide on how big you wanna go with your jewelry, you can kind of narrow it down to more specific styles a little bit easier as well. You know, larger pieces of jewelry are usually bolder in styles and vice versa. But in determining the specific style of the jewelry, just like how more details and patterns tend to break up the colors and lower the contrast level, more intricate designs in the jewelry can also have a similar effect. And you'll notice that even with jewelry recommendations for different color seasons, higher contrast seasons are typically associated with styles that are larger and bolder and less intricate or detailed. I also mentioned in my light and soft seasons video that soft autumns really have a wide range of patterns to choose from in terms of what's available out there because soft autumn colors are so strongly associated with more intricate styles of patterns, especially like boho chic styles, for example. And that's also quite evident in the jewelry designs as well. With these boho chic styles of jewelry, the colors can be a bit bolder and they can also vary quite a bit in size from small to large, but the intricate details in these designs really help 
help with breaking up the contrast created by the bolder colors and the larger sizes. So when you're deciding on the styles of jewelry, the size and the details of the design can have a relationship to the contrast level as well. And you can also use a similar logic or thought process in determining the styles of your other accessories like your bags. If you need high contrast in your outfits, again, overall the energy is big and you want to match that with your accessories. So you might want to go slightly bigger or bolder with your other accessories as well in order to make sure your accessories are not overpowered by the rest of your outfit. Unlike jewelry with items like handbags, regardless of the size, I think you can usually find a wide variety of styles. So this might be an area where you can be far more liberal with your preferences and tastes. So in the end, the level of contrast found in your overall coloring influences the level of contrast that's suitable for you in your clothing and outfits, which also influences the types of patterns that you can wear well, as well as the size and the style of jewelry and accessories that would work more harmoniously with your overall look from head to toe. Obviously, these are not strict rules for you to follow, but rather a loose set of guidelines that can help steer you towards the right direction in curating your own style. I hope you found the tips from today helpful, and if you did, don't forget to press those like and subscribe buttons before you go. I'll see you in my next video, and until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous!